Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are here today for our second budget meeting. Am I right in saying that? We're going to have a presentation by John McNamee. We're going to give him about a minute and a half to get ready. All right, so we had at the last meeting, we, uh, we talked about uh, some of the questions that the school committee had and some of the changes that we're going to make. So as a result of that, we wound up reducing the tutoring expenses by 8,500. If you recall, it was like 9,500 in there. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, there was the, um, in the past, there was some user tutoring that was going on after school. And I believe that ended in last year or this year? Last year. Well, last two years year. ago, because it was built into his, his um, contract last year. So we did the research and then we were able to pull that number up. Uh, we eliminated the $1,000 for the field hockey coach that was in there uh, that we identified. We added the 5000 for the tuition assistance program, which was the new policy that was being put together for uh, uh, providing tuition assistance to um, the teachers that were going to be going back to uh, or getting uh, advanced uh, degree courses. Uh, we have one student, according to the superintendent, mm -hmm. at the CT program in Tibetan. I haven't yet to get billed for that, but so uh, that was included in the budget, so I added that uh, into the budget. And uh, we met, um, I believe it was on January 29th, the business managers met with the board at Newport County Regional uh, Special Ed. And they had the revised budget in there, and as a result, our cost went down uh, $27,000. So I, I put that into the budget. And then uh, the annual ID fees were not included in the fee set schedule, so we added uh, $9,500 to the annual fees. So the result of all the changes was a decrease of, I believe, 10,002, 10,002 from the, uh, from the original budget on the, um, on the 15th. That's the good news. <laughs> Thank you. Now, we have the other proposed changes in the non-engineering. Thank you. Uh, there was a request to add soccer goals for the cost of about 4000 I'll uh, let Mr. Gabriel speak to these other three items, which are technical uh, technology items that you would like to have added. I can speak to the soccer goals. Um, they were uh, inspected by the uh, Recreation Committee um, and found out uh, that they were getting really old and almost unfixable. It was uh, recommended to the Town Council. The town Council sent us a letter that they needed to be replaced. They could be used for backup goals or extra goals if they were fixed correctly. So I just wanted to give a, a little bit of history on that. So the quick refresh, uh, we crunched the numbers, and after looking at the next couple of years, um, we have a sizable amount of our fleet that are um, no longer going to be getting software updates. As of June 2021, um, there's also a small portion uh, that's expiring a little bit earlier, and the rest of it is expiring approximately six months after that because we're just within a similar time frame or, or we're of a similar model. So as we took a look at it, um, we would need to replace one more Chromebook cart for this upcoming year um, in order to maintain a cycle of replacing a third of devices every three years. 
um, that gives us the fourth year of a replacement cycle to form and then focus back on the classroom hardware and teacher devices. Um, so doing that is kind of the jump start that puts us in a really good position to cycle out a, a predetermined number of those kids and devices on a regular basis and make sure we don't fall too far behind them. Um, the access control upgrades, uh, that one's, they work. Um, so it's one of those things that is, is a little harder to justify when you, when you see it and it works every day. Um, but the system that it's built off of is a Windows XP machine. Um, I don't know if you've, you've all had an older computer recently got the pop-up that Windows 7 is about to go end of life. Um, Windows XP came out before that, two operating systems before that. Um, it's very old, very insecure. Um, there is no more type of security updates provided for it anymore. Um, so that is definitely something that we should look into replacing sooner rather than later. Um, it does become a significant li liability risk. Not that it's terribly easy to do, but there are very easy ways to bypass the system that we do currently have. Um, the AV equipment is, a, is the result of us splitting up the remaining project work that needs to be done in the, in the gym and stage area um, for the refresh, the um, removal, or the move, moving of the VFDs, um, installation of the HVAC, everything else um, ended up being a major project. Um, with a lot of extra expenses within that. As a result, um, I afford to do a good portion of either the video or the audio. Um, we're working with, with everybody involved in the space to try and figure out which one makes sense to prioritize for this year. Um, but then the remainder of that we need to float into next year's budget as well. So that takes care of those three. Is any of the video or audio reimbursable? <coughs> so not that's, that's under. The piece. No, it's just not. It's equipment. So if we decide that if we, we'd like to do this, uh, we could try to do a four-year lease, which would bring down the, would be bringing out the annual cost for 26.5. Adding the, uh, the 26.5 to the town appropriation would bring us up to uh, 2.97. Right now, we're at um, 189.182 increase, which would bring us to about 2.68%. And as you know, this, this number by law can't be any higher than 4%. So that's just a key number that we look at. Um, <coughs> But, Mr. Um, may I just ask a couple of questions of Jonathan? I don't have, uh, do we have a copy, Mariah, of the breakdown for what was your budget at the first workshop, which was a more exhaustive, broken down one that you had? And I'm wondering what the, I neglected to bring mine. I don't remember what your overall figure was uh, for that. Um, but what I am wondering is how, um, you know, ninety thousand dollars didn't make it onto that first one. Definitely, um, the access control was a little bit more of a late discovery um, once we started poking around in that and determining what, what does the access control do. Uh, the access control is a system that hooks into all of the door push bars or magnetic magnetic strikes. Uh, it hooks into all the fob readers, the card readers, all that kind of stuff, and it maintains the security of the building, sends alarms where it needs to in the event of a breach. Um, grants you access and maintains your permissions if you have a fob, excuse me, um, permission in the building, sets the schedules for that kind of stuff. And it has to be a separate dedicated system just for that? Not so much that it has to be a dedicated system, it is currently. Um, it, it's installed onto a rather old server um, that's in the main server room. It can run on other newer types of hardware, it can be virtualized. The biggest thing is the software that it's currently running on is it, the, the the vendor application is going on 17 years old, I believe. Um, the operating system is, is about a similar age. Um, that's a very long time for service life and relying on something that you trust all your security to. Um, and the AV equipment is what precisely would the $50,000 be for the 
AV. Um, so the fifty thousand dollars, like I said, we are we're trying That's to determine. That's a dream. <laughs> That's a dream. We we're trying to determine which is the appropriate course for this year. Whether we go in, um, yeah, I think the LCE and a few other people all want to make sure that it's it's a good multi-use space for everybody. Um, so we're going to figure out if it makes sense to buy the projector for this point in time and focus more on the audio and the lighting upgrades next year, or vice versa. Um, either way, that encompasses the majority of um, replacement of some of the older analog wiring, um, moving and replacing some of the bad speakers that are in there, uh, installing a motorized projector screen, installing a signal processor to, to balance the audio and really make sure it sounds nice, um, new wireless receivers and transmitters um, so for headsets and handheld microphones um, used during performances, plays, that kind of stuff. Um, as well as a theater lighting system that includes track lighting that can actually be, excuse me, controlled from elsewhere in the room, um, not just from behind the stage. They're limited to, I believe, three lights for performances right now. So we can have a few more of those. So they're putting lights on the basketball rims? Currently, yeah, I believe to they- To face the stage rather than that one. they're not adequate. I believe they, they zip tie some lights up and run the zip tie lights piece. and the audio is the audio is immensely improved with the VFDs, the, v the um, variable frequency right. devices out. That was huge. It's better, definitely. Um, the monitors that are in the ceiling right now are a little older, but they're actually pretty good speakers. Um, they, they were actually um, outdoor PA speakers, which was an interesting choice, but I'm sure it was for durability in the gym, most likely, that that was chosen. Um, it's more in the way they're configured right now. They point almost diagonally at each other and create a weird dead space where your sound kind of, <coughs> where your sound kind of just bounces around in the middle of this big empty echo chamber. And that actually does a lot to hurt the audio quality itself. Um, so most of the audio on the ceiling is fine. It would just need to be pointed in a different direction. Um, and then there are some engineers that are doing all the math on, on how that works out. Um, but the monitors at the front of the room are definitely undersized. That causes um, a little bit of strain on the system. You have to turn those up very loudly to be able to hear it. Um, and it distorts other parts of the audio too. So it, it's a lot of smaller pieces that add up to kind of one big, muddy sounding audio result. Um, but it's definitely not cheap. <laughs> um, a lot of the equipment we're talking about, if you buy the appropriate equipment for the space, is, is rather expensive. Um, but in order to uh, for example, in order to mount a projector in a space like that, um, not, not only are you talking about a projector that's at least two or three times the cost of what you would find in a typical classroom, that's worked down for the light, for the distance, for all that stuff. Um, I need to make sure that nobody's hit with a basketball. It needs to be mounted really securely. Um, we need a fair amount of cabling going up to it. It needs to have a good cage around it so that it can be protected. Um, so th there is a lot of other yeah. stuff that goes into that, definitely. So how much of the 50,000 is the projector? The projector comes out to about 15. Um, that's including a lot of the wiring, the installation, as well as some of the labor to, well, they're up in the ceiling anyways, to do some of the work on the speakers and help improve the audio quality there. How many times a year and for what purposes do we use a projector in the auditorium? The, I don't have the exact number of times a year. Um, it's rather varied. I know the, the, the theater group uses it. I've heard that the town wants to use it. I've heard. Um, the space was used um, a number of to show years. movies for um, kids, and that just died. I and yeah, but, 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 you know, and I think and I think with the all the work that we've done in there, the AC, I think the the big picture was to try to make this thing. You know, it's as close as we can to a theater in there for the town um, and the school. And I guess the first uh, phase uh, ran over. So now, if we want to complete this thing, it's going to be an extra fifty thousand dollars to get the audio and, and the lighting going. Projector, I could. I mean, you know, maybe we do that another year. I don't know, or you know, this committee will decide what they want to do with that. With this, with these figures, I'd like to ask. Um, we respect your expertise here and rely on it. Um, I'd like to just be confirmed that you've carefully scrutinized 
every item on that list and, and you've shopped around like a good shopper would do and you feel confident that this is the number, there's no room. This right. is, at this point in time, at least until we, uh, after we meet with everybody, hopefully tomorrow, and have a better sense of how to move forward, um, I, I would say that that is the best ballpark number right now. I would see those costs going down from there, not up, really. Um, we did try to estimate it in a way that makes sure we're accounting for every possible accommodation. Um, I certainly wouldn't ever expect, yeah, I would not expect that to go up. Um, we had a couple of different vendors take a look at, at the space, though, um, and I had, I had an independent um, audio engineer also look at it, who I happen to know, he's a friend of mine, but he's very, very good at it, and he took a review of all the proposals as well, did a little researching um, price-wise and everything, and, uh, and we are definitely getting into pricing, but, but again, that, that is, is a ballpark that, if anything, is, is on the slightly high side. I would expect we could get a discount if we, the more we purchase at the same time, the more we do as well. Um, Labor is also a factor in there too. The more we can get done at the same time, the less we have to bring people back to do it. Um, but but that's a very small portion of the overall. I had sticker shock too, and Jonathan uh, gave me a Cooks tour last week. Um, I had seen the other proposals that Mr. Benjamin worked with, that some community members worked with, and I wanted to see for myself. Um, I was shocked by the condition of some of the components in there and, and also delight, delighted, you know, some of the components were highly functional, um, the wireless system and so forth. But Jonathan made a good point. Do we buy a $3,500 projector that is good for a classroom or a space like this or do we truly transform it into a community space? Now that we have AC in there, now that the VFDs have been removed from the stage, all that ambient noise. Um, I say we do it right and we do it once. On the less numeric side of things, um, I, I've done a couple of different like AV refreshes for, for gyms and auditoriums and type of spaces. It's, it's definitely one of those cases where the more you skip in the beginning, the longer the problems that, that are associated with it persist, or the sooner they arise, I guess I should say. One of the biggest things is, is around ease of use. Um, at a, if you're buying the appropriate level of commercial projector and audio system, um, they have a very high level of quality that's designed to work very flawlessly over a long period of time. They don't have bulbs to replace. They don't have complicated interfaces to maintain. It's the kind of system where you walk in the room and you push a button on the wall and the projector turns on and the screen goes down and the microphones work. And, and that's really another thing that we, we're trying to consider too. We don't necessarily want to create a, a system where we get all the moving pieces in there, but they're not talking to each other and they're not working together in such a way that we don't need to tr train somebody substantially just to turn on the, the room. Um, we want to make sure that if it is the rec center, a financial meeting for the town, a class that wants to go in and, and do a video chat with a scientist, whatever it happens to be, you want to make sure that they can go in there push the button and rely on it to work right away. Um, also, you could have, you could get the uh, public viewing rights to a film and show that film for the whole community, have uh, a symposium afterwards, or you could buy those viewing rights and show films and charge and have a fundraiser. So we do have a group of community members who are looking at, you know, getting something for the next play, 3500 or whatever. And it's just not going to elevate that space, elevate its uses. It's just going to be another sort of residential grade projection area. So right now there's a pull down screen, which is just, you know, just jump up. It, it, it you put all this money into AC, remove the noisy VFGs, Create a space for the community to use to show public, to show films, um, to have symposia, and it's it, that's easy. That any anyone can come in and work it. We have nothing. Right Everything now. will be purchased. There's no leasing options in any of the equipment. Oh. Yeah, we would own it. Um, the the only lease I think would come over spreading the cost over multiple years. There, right? Well, that would, yeah, we could do it on a FOIA lease. But maybe. 
We would also be bringing the... But we're purchasing right. the equipment because we know that technology changes so rapidly that yes. we make an investment and then we will have to reinvest. So no, exactly. And, yeah. and that's Finance my consideration here too, definitely. Um, the projector itself has a, I don't know off the top of my head, but I want to say a 40,000 hour lifespan for any part in the housing itself. It has, it doesn't have a bulb anymore. They, they don't have parts that can burn out or die on you. Um, so it's a very low cost of ownership over time. It's a very highly reliable system too. Any other questions on these four items? Go Following ahead. up on Rita's question, yep. could you offer an opinion as to what you would expect the longevity of a projector would be? I mean, not just the 40,000 hours of you know, bulb free, sitting underneath an no. inoperable um, projector, I think it. Um, I mean, of, uh, projectors of, of commercial quality like this, I've seen easily last for 10 to 15 years. Um, it really comes down to as long as the thing you're plugging into it supports the standard, then you can do it. Um, this projector supports every standard pretty much that, that is known to man at this point in time as well as a couple that haven't quite come out yet. Um, so so it, is, it is the case where I would fully expect a, a minimum of 10 years out of it. And with the, that air conditioned space central to the town, that's all, you just there's, do only, right. there's only one place to stop and go and that's that right. gym. Right. If they want to gather. Right. So, any other questions on the four? Our next budget meet. I, I just want to state that our next budget meets the 26. 26, okay. and that's when we will decide what we vote on, what we take out, what we do half or more or add or whatever. So the 26 will, will be the day. Do you have more to talk about? No, I just want to uh, point out that uh, again. We would be with the additional 26.5 and looking at 199.382 or 2.82%. Ed, did you have anything else to add? Just um, what are your opinion as to how fixed these numbers are between now and the 26th? We'll, we'll, or at least my hope is that prior to the 26th, we would get whatever the final numbers you'd be looking at would be. Well, I mean, we don't, we don't, we're not going to have health care probably until March or April. So that number is in there at an estimate of 7%, which is what the consultants are saying would be the health care increase. Any other so, variables? So there are numbers that are changing. I mean, you've got enrollment numbers that could change with Portsmouth High School. Uh, for, you know, they're, they're going to change, and, but they change throughout the year. So this is probably the best uh, estimate that we have at this point in time. Public input on the budget. Seeing any. Any other? Okay, I just want Go ahead. I did hand out the, the summary which has the federal grants on it, and I know that Ben Gordier has that the last meeting. So you do have in, in your package just a summary of the, the preliminary budget for the general fund with the federal grants added. Oh, yeah. The total. Yeah. So that's good. Uh, that's what he was right. when, when are we going to talk about uh, what we're going to draft for the town financial meeting? Well, we have to present it to the, uh, we have to submit to the town clerk by the 28th of February, so we're going to give them a number at that point in time. We meet with the budget committee, I believe, on the 17th of March. Yeah, so that, that'll be gone. Oh, well. So when we, talk, when we meet with the budget committee, then we're going to decide what we're going to put in, into, into the public document that goes out in people's mailboxes. Well, the public document, usually the budget board will request that information be uh, provided to them sometime in the second or third week in April. Because there's been some kind of a discrepancy on, on, on who, you know, writes that, or what's included in that. So I want to be clear on well, who. Yeah, we, can, we can draft that up and submit it to the school committee prior to that, that period of time. So. So that'll be the St. Patrick's Day we're meeting, from what I understand. We yeah. are. Yeah. So. We agree. That's a tough one. Uh, anyone else on this budget? To, no? Okay. So I will uh, consider a vote to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? <laughs>